Hey everyone and welcome to Screams After Midnight. I am Peter, that is Tim. We mm -hmm. talk about horror movies on this show. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and in this episode, we are looking at The Perfection, which is a... It's now, now it's a Netflix movie. I actually heard about this before it was like Netflix purchased it. It was, a, yeah. it was on festivals and stuff and people were giving it and talking about it. It was getting buzz. And then Netflix bought it, so that made it really easy for everyone to see. Uh, so mm -hmm. this came out just over a week ago. Um, we, we couldn't record last weekend. Tim was away for the weekend, which is why we're doing it now. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we got a life. What do you want? <laughs> yeah, we're going, to, we're going to talk about it. So uh, we'll start spoiler free uh, as always, and we will give you a warning somewhere in the middle before we get into spoilers. The premise of of the perfection, as much as I want to say anyway, Good luck. without without spoilers, <laughs> is that we have um, Charlotte and Lizzie, who are both these uh these prodigy like uh, cello players who have went to this mm -hmm. posh academy and charlotte who's played by allison williams who you probably know from get out uh mm -hmm. she was she was the 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 girlfriend in that uh she it took me about uh three quarters of the movie till i figured that out really <laughs> that's where she's from okay <laughs> it was uh, bothering me the whole time but she uh the, you know has is away for a long time because her mother's sick and she comes back and she forms a relationship with lizzie who's the slightly younger and you know we're talking like three four years younger uh, who's played by logan browning who i know from dear white people uh so uh -huh. and they have a relationship and there's some twists and turns and that's all i could really say because everything from that point <laughs> on is a complete and total spoiler um yeah <laughs> so it's one of those movies it's one of those movies where you can't really talk about much of it until we get spoilers but we can talk <laughs> about uh, our feelings and quality and that kind of thing before we get mm -hmm. to that stuff so tim yeah <laughs> did you enjoy the perfection uh honestly uh, i I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I gotta, uh, I gotta think about. It. I wouldn't say that. I, I definitely didn't hate it. Uh, I, like I can say that for sure. Um, like mm. it was interesting. Um, I didn't know anything about go going in because I, you know, like you had also heard it be getting some buzz and that it's a movie to watch. Uh, <laughs> which <laughs> I guess that doesn't sound too uh, too good. But it, like like it was a movie to like watch out for. That it was something like you know mm. you would want to see. But like you know everything I heard about it was like, but don't like don't uh, learn anything about it. Don't you know go into it as blind as possible. So I didn't even watch like the trailer or anything. Um, I mean, like, at one point, my wife was like, "Oh, this sounds interesting." She started watching the trailer. I was like, "No, turn it off. <laughs> We're not supposed to watch it." Uh, the but yeah, then as I was watching it, um, I, I do think there was like you know some really interesting stuff there. Um, yeah, you know, I, I like a lot of the people in it. Uh, you know, like the two main actresses are really great, uh, obviously. But um, you know, one of my personal favorites, Stephen Weber, is in this. I was very happy to see him. Is Weber it Webber? <laughs> is it Weber or Weber? Oh, it's Weber. Oh yeah. You sure? This one be looks like Weber to me. I actually no. I was wondering what I knew him from. He's he, he was an eye zombie. Plus that's where I knew him from. Oh, okay. He's actually, um, yeah, I mean, like, growing up, uh, obviously, like, I knew him from Wings, but he's actually, like, a pretty, uh, got, like, a pre pretty decent uh, horror pedigree. He was in the, the Masters of Horror episode, Jennifer, which was uh, a very disturbing Dario Argento one, uh, which I actually like quite a bit. He uh, narrated the audiobook for Stephen King's It, which is very, very good. And, of course... Of course, we we all remember him as Jack Torrance in The Shining. Of course, the you know ABC miniseries yes. version of The Shining. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he so he, he's actually uh, got got a pretty good horror pedigree. Uh, but I, I like him a lot. I, I think he's a very good person. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, but I, I, I don't know. It's just a. And, and you know, I watched it late last night, so maybe I still have feelings to unpack uh, for the movie. Um, <clears throat> but it, it's like one of those things where, like, I'm not really sure if it's like, okay, this was just like a cool, fine movie, uh, or if it's one of those things where it's like, oh, like this was genius, <laughs> you know? Uh, I I really don't know yet. <laughs> I um, I th I liked it. Uh, I think, <laughs> um, like, I think it's really well directed. There's a lot of really stylish little yeah. moments with the, with the way it like cuts scenes together or decides to sort of 
uh, play with how it explains things later on in the movie. Um, and I think those are all done really well. I think it's actually insane to me, like, where this script goes. The script goes places that I, like, I feel at the start of the movie doesn't prepare me for at all. Mm. I mean, the, the first, like, sure. 30, 40 minutes feel really focused in, and it feels like it's going down this one plot, and then it becomes, like, about something completely different once it reveals what's happening. And it's like, whoa, this is a really weird movie. Um, and that's all the script. That is the, the script is this weird, like, structured concoction of a, of a film but i think it's really well directed and the cast are really good yeah. uh, and ultimately i think they they, they make it worth the, the journey um i, I was definitely yeah. like whenever they, they pulled the rug out from under me like a couple of times they always kind of worked and i was kind of like oh <laughs> like good <laughs> uh, i was always kind of into it so yeah uh like i i think maybe um bare minimum like it, it it definitely keeps your attention like, oh yeah and you know I, there's never really any part of it that because it you know it kind of kicks in right away or at least it didn't you know feel like it you know took very long um and then yeah once it kind of you know start, starts getting all crazy and stuff like it, you know it's a pretty you know like seamless uh roller coaster there and yeah there's definitely never any part of it where you're gonna be like all right get on with it <laughs> Oh, not at all. And, you know, it, it does things in the second half of the film that you would never see coming in the first half of the film. We are just like, wait, we're doing what now? Wait, what's that? What's going on? Um, oh, this person's a villain. No, this person's not a villain. Okay, okay. Right, right. Just yeah. <laughs> make up our minds. Um, it's, and, it's, and it's hard because, I mean, we're doing it right now, but, like, yeah, every kind of little thing that I've heard about it was all very, like, yeah, you know, like uh oh like it, it's shocking you're not gonna know where it goes like you gotta prepare yourself and stuff which is fine but it did give me expectations for something else that you know it, and it's hard you know to talk about without spoilers but i think maybe i was uh getting ready for something else uh, than what happens in the movie which is totally fine because i do like what happens in the movie but uh i think maybe with all my preconceived notions uh i, I was expecting something else Mm. but i don't know it's it's really hard to talk about <laughs> it's it's funny because like yeah i feel like the the reputation this had gives you this this expectation of like like how crazy is this going to get to the point where i almost feel i felt like the first that you know at first it was a watching the film and it's, it's it's clearly in the third act and it's just okay this is pretty much where, where, where we've went uh there won't be much left for me to be surprised by i'm like this doesn't feel as crazy as i was expecting even though it is actually really crazy when you stop and think about what the plot is you stop and think about what's going on with the characters it's actually really crazy but it's not like i've I've seen crazier <laughs> i guess that's what, yeah. what i'm saying oh yeah <laughs> um but uh, no i mean the cast are really good i, I like the, the two leads a lot um yeah they're really good they're really good they have good chemistry um I, I, there's like the, the, the opening like 15 like 20 minutes or so of this film and they meet kind of properly for the first time as adults um like the sexual tension every time they look at each other is like just like palpable <laughs> you could you yeah. could sense it, you can feel it <laughs> sure <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I guess we have to go into spoilers already yeah I, yeah I, I guess maybe like my final thought is um it uh i'd say it's definitely worth checking out it's on netflix so it's pretty easy to see and uh yeah i mean you know if you like horror movies if, if you like sh stuff that you know gets like a little crazy that you know throws you for loops uh, i would definitely recommend checking it out mm. so full spoilers then for for the perfection uh, from here on out so we have to kind of go in order because I feel like nothing else makes going to make sense. Sure. Uh, so you know, we we see uh, Charlotte at home with her mother, and her mother's dying, uh, and it's it's taken ten years. She left the academy, you know, when she was like fourteen, and she decides to look up where where her her professor. Professor's not the right word. Teacher, I'll just say teacher. Uh, sure. the, you know, the, the head of this 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 cellist uh academy school for gifted cellists yeah school for gifted yeah he's basically xavier but for cellists <laughs> uh and he goes and finds this show that they're doing in, in, in shanghai and uh lizzie's there she's going to perform and she's going to be a judge and they're kind of like 
you know, they make eye contact, the whole thing. Uh, and it does this really great, great thing where it reveals that she's got uh, scars on her, or uh, uh, for Charlotte this is, it reveals <laughs> she's got scars on her arm like she's tried to kill herself before uh, when she goes to hug, uh, like, uh, what's his name? Anton, uh, Steve Weber's character, okay. the, the the head of the, the cellist school. Uh, and you see her arms all have all these scars, and it's like, okay, that that really caught me off guard the way it revealed that. Like I thought, and this is what I'm talking about with the, with the, the direction is that it reveals things in ways that are very interesting, where it doesn't like <laughs> point them out, it doesn't like do these big song and dances about it or these big dramatic stings. It just does it, and you just notice it and go, oh wait a minute, like and it, you know, it's like, yeah. okay, there's more to this. But then it does these like quick cuts to like you know like time what appears to be in like a mental hospital where she's like getting like surgery and things like that. And she's got like mm-hmm. you know wires attached to her head and everything else. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So this is the opening fifty twenty minutes. She 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 and Lizzie uh, get kind of close. They're they're flirting. Uh, it's like hey, do you want to go dancing tonight? And they have this kind of bonding thing when they're talking about uh these like parents of the kids because there's like four young girls in Shanghai who are competing in this cellist competition and the winner will get a scholarship to go to this school and they're going to help judge it and uh, you know so this is all going on so the one thing where you feel like so again I have no idea where this movie is going I don't know what the plot of this movie is <laughs> Mm-hmm. And they're going down the stairs at one point, and this uh, guy at the bottom of the stairs starts vomiting like yellow, very violently. Mm-hmm. Uh, just this yellow gunk coming out, and he's beside himself. And you know, we hear very quickly, oh, there's some kind of you know uh, Ebola style of, of virus that's you know spreading very quickly, and like we have to be have to be careful and all that. And I'm like, okay, it's, okay, is this like a like a, a disease movie is, is that where this it's, is going yeah i was kind of like oh yeah are we looking at like some type of virus thing or maybe even like a zombie movie like all right like <laughs> interesting yeah you know like I'm, I'm prepared and it the movie plays out like that for a long time where not so much that it was going to be about like a mass of sick people but right. you know, the next day like charlotte's agreed to go go with lizzie on this like trip she's getting a two-week vacation and she wants to like travel around you know china and go other places and not in like first class or anything like that she wants to go in like you know little you know private buses and things like that and you know really you know, down to earth stuff and you know charlotte wants to go with her they've, they've bonded they've formed a connection <laughs> but lizzie starts I mean, feeling this sick. is after like a pretty heavy like a uh, you know sex scene and stuff yes yes <laughs> the, the night before <laughs> there's a very erotic sex scene the night before yes um but you know lizzie's getting sick she's she's, she's like you know mm-hmm. she's aspirin constantly and she's uh you know got a sore head or the mouth is dry and it's like okay so so she's caught this thing whatever it is and they're on this bus they're driving through the middle of nowhere and she keeps getting worse and eventually they have to stop the bus and i think one of the things that i liked about this section of the movie is the idea that neither of them can really speak mandarin uh especially uh, charlotte and they need to like stop the bus but they can't really speak to the driver and luckily there's one guy on board but it had this sort of thing of like you're in this other country no one can almost no one can speak your language so you're kind of, you feel more isolated and alone and, and you know vulnerable than you, you otherwise normally would uh but in, in a nice natural sense because one of the things we often criticize with horror movies is when they, they make oh, other cultures it's scary because yeah other cultures have voodoo and shit it doesn't do any of that <laughs> it, it's just no yeah. it's this is purely just you know lost in translation the like adding to the, the fear yeah, like this whole uh, bus sequence, I thought was really, really compelling. Like just the, uh, you know, the fact that she's getting sicker and sicker, and like, you know, you don't know what's going on with her, but you know, it's very, very intense, and she's spitting things up, and you know, she's freaking out, and like banging her head, and there's like bugs in her vomit, and um, yep. yeah, and then you compound that with you know everyone else, like you know, seeing everyone else on the bus, like their reaction to her, because they're, you know, they're not really. Um, like you know they're more concerned for themselves than actually helping her like there are people that you know like that one guy yeah that does want to help but you can tell that they are more concerned about you know hey if she's got something like you know we don't want to get sick we we Uh need to you know so we have this bus full of people that we you need to survive and then yeah basically ending up with them getting stranded in the middle of like nowhere yeah yeah, like you said they don't know where they are they don't speak the language they don't know (laughs) you know how they're gonna get out of it it's uh it's insane and yeah this is really really well done yeah and the driver kicks them off yeah and they're, they're stranded mm-hmm. and it gets worse she starts throwing up again and she sees more bugs and then she starts seeing like there's like an effect on her arm where you see like stuff crawling under her skin 
and you know eventually it breaks through and there's all these bugs like crawling over her hand and then this is the moment where the movie does something where i'm like this is why people don't want it, like you to know anything because charlotte pulls out a giant meat cleaver as if almost like a cartoon is like because i actually said where the hell did that come from <laughs> does she have that on her what the hell and she just pulls it out into frame and goes you know what you have to do and she gives her the cleaver and lizzie goes over and uh, puts her arm on a rock and goes to you know cut off her hand and then the movie like pauses and starts rewinding mm-hmm. And it rewinds throughout yeah. the day back to the start of the hotel room uh, before they left, uh, where she first mm-hmm. needs some some uh, ibuprofen, and mm-hmm. we get this this reveal of all these various moments leading up to this point, where it shows that Charlotte has actually orchestrated this. Charlotte's been mm-hmm. given her, her medication that her mother took, uh, which is really strong and has side effects. Um, mm-hmm. she, she's made the point of giving her booze which is not supposed to go with the, the medication uh, we see her get the cleaver from the store and then we even see her on the bus when she's like you know, making faces at the kid she's actually on her phone looking up how to do a, a tourniquet uh, <laughs> for, for a cut off hand she has yeah. built this she, she, and then it, yeah. it points out as well that the vomit with the bugs she's the one who says there's bugs in your vomit and makes her think that yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like it even there. There's even like a little um, like earlier than that. She just puts kind of like the suggestion in her brain. Like mm. she kind of flicks something off her back and is like, she's like, what? She's like, oh, there's a bug on you. Like even like going at, as far back as, you know, like that just little detail. Yeah. Adding to it is really, really interesting. And it's like, no, all of this is hard. So this movie's not a someone getting sick movie <laughs> and dealing with it. That is not what this is at all. Because this twist here reveals that she's behind it all. And it was all just a play to get her to cut off her on our hand, which yeah. is like over the top, but it's really well done the way it's shot and told. And I mean, I'm not going to lie. The first thought I had was black people need to stop trusting Alison Williams because <laughs> it keeps ending out really bad for them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, That's you know, true. I'm putting that out there. Um, so you know, and what's great too, though, is this is just like what one of like, 20 twists <laughs> like because because even now you still don't really know where it's going it's like all right so is it going to be like her you know still freaking out or her dealing with what happened or is it going to become like a revenge movie like it's uh it's a very interesting thing to throw this early on the movie but it still doesn't prepare you for like some of the other stuff that's no, coming up because because after that i think you're thinking it is a revenge for a while you think it may be a revenge movie because yeah you know uh lizzie does eventually get back to the school and she's got her hand cut off and i did laugh actually because anton's reaction is like oh what, what happened to your hand he sounds angry because she can't play a cello anymore he's, he's not concerned for her well-being he's upset that his best student can't play cello anymore yeah like i think at the beginning of the movie like you're obviously like okay this is like a snooty music guy mm-hmm. fine um but then I, I like that as you slowly you know get more and more into it you start to realize like oh well, the movie is called the perfection and you know this is like you know this guy's mo like he you know everything has to be absolutely perfect and you know yeah it's uh, you know his star pupil you know not being able to perform anymore is you know so like abhorrent to him that you know he can't even like have her around because you know she she's pleading with him and it's like very easy like yeah like you could have you know had her be a teacher or something or whatever but you know it's like he can't even have that no he's like no get out you're not here anymore um and like you know and she thinks it's you know that that charlotte out of jealousy and that the the, the police in shanghai couldn't do anything because she did take the pills herself she did cut off her own hand (laughs) it was just all very manipulation you know (laughs) that's true yeah manipulative um (laughs) And she she goes like you know after she's kicked out she she you know goes to um, Minnesota where where Charlotte lives, and sneaks in her house and like teases her, and we cut to her showing up at the music school and she's like oh I've got the bitch <laughs> and she's like in the back of the car, and you know I mean as much as we're glossing over it because it's it's very sprinkled throughout but there's, there's a lot of little moments in the film where we get these little quick flashbacks of like young Charlotte like running from the 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 school as if she's oh, right. trying to get away or the awkward moments that she had just these little like slice of life moments that they don't even have necessarily plot in them they're just kind of like a like a tone thing like a mood like this is how she felt when she was there and you know she she's like still like she's in the the the, the music academy now and at this point anton's seeming okay because he's, he's kind of like 
you know, she's not she's not tied up anymore he's like hey you know why did you do this to her um she won't hurt you now she's in another room with you know with someone else mm-hmm. and she says you know i was trying to save her i wasn't i wasn't doing this to hurt her i was doing this to save her and he's like be cutting off her hand save her from yeah. what and she's like from you and he sort of like almost tries to pretend that he doesn't know what she's talking about and then goes well okay then and then, he, then he goes to grab her and then all of a sudden it's like yeah. no he knows what she's talking about i'm like okay what did he do what, what, what's going on here though yeah i i really love this scene there's just like a really great bit of acting where like he mm. almost like he has like his hand to his chest he's like me what 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 and then yeah. I, I, I actually i love whenever you see these scenes like in a movie where like the villain just totally decides to become a villain like mm. he's just totally like giving up his charade like he's like all right yeah you got me and uh, I, I just love these little turns and, and uh, really well done because obviously at first i'm just thinking like what does he just like is this basically like a more extreme version of whiplash where he's just like this awful sure yeah and i suppose yeah that's in, in a way kind of still is but it's it's this very <laughs> extreme versus yeah. you know what whiplash is <laughs> Uh, because we get this flashback, this extended flashback now, where because we're introduced to this room, this private room from earlier in the film, mm-hmm. when the girl who won the Shanghai competition has been introduced to the school, and it's like, hey, this is the, the, the room with the best acoustics in the house. There's like only like six chairs, and it's like a private performance room, and you have to study for years before you're allowed to perform in here, and mm-hmm. you're uh, like in whatever, right? And we get this flashback mm-hmm. here after this this moment, and the we're with Anton and, and Charlotte, where we see young Charlotte, and Anton's there. And she's playing cello uh, and eventually messes up one note, right? Messes up one note. That's all she does is messes up one note. And he's like very stern after this. He's like, that was, that was, you know, how dare you mess up a note in this room? Like you, you pay, you, 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 the the perfection is what you play in this room. And he's like, he's like, oh, what does this say? But you're representing the the academy. What does this say about the academy? You've let yourself down. You let me down. You let the academy down. And he's being like a total dick bag. Again, very whiplash in in a lot of ways. Uh, Not exactly like JK Simmons in that movie, but certainly there's some parallels. Right. And then it, and this goes on for like a good couple of minutes. Like this speech he gives is quite a while. He's like he's like tearing it apart verbally, and then he says, "Well, you know what happens now. What the punishment is." And I, I forget if he's already introduced these two other people. Um, yeah, they they came in. I don't know if yes, yeah, maybe as he's saying, you know what the punishment is, as they're walking yeah. in. Uh, these two other guys <laughs> who are about his age, and. And now, before we kind of get to like what the reveal is, I, I'm just curious. Uh, now, I thought, again, because going into this, I know everyone says like, you know, oh, it's so crazy. You won't believe what happened. It's shocking. I I was kind of expecting like there's going to be something like really out there. Like there's going to be some supernatural element. Like, you know, like they have to play this song to perfection and it summons something. Or, you know, if they don't, they, they get punished and like a demon comes out or something. Like, again, I guess I was just expecting something crazy and shocking, which don't get me wrong. What happens is definitely crazy and shocking. But like, I was expecting like, you know, something really bizarre. So I don't know if you, did you have any kind of like little, like, I don't know, like a, glistening of, of what you thought might happen or what, what was going to occur or i think as he was, was as he was building up to this punishment i was kind of like thinking like like i was thinking some form of torture or so, like some like, yeah. like physical thing but for whatever reason my mind never jumped to sexual assault it never jumped to that well yeah i, th- I think maybe we just don't want it to <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah maybe that's just that maybe because you know th- then what happens is is he walks out off frame and then it's like a pov shot from from young charlotte and he walks back into frame and it's blurry it's out of focus but he's butt ass naked like you yeah. can't see the details but you can see his dick flapping back and forth as he's walking towards her and then as, as he gets really close and it becomes just like a, you know a, a medium close-up of his head mm. uh it goes into focus and he's like well it's time for your punishment now and that's kind of where the the scene ends and it's like holy shit like th- that's just came out of nowhere and it's you know, the other guys in the room who are probably going to take part like they're also teachers yeah. his wife who also runs the school you know paloma yeah paloma <laughs> i don't know it's just such a funny name to say she she like knows about all this she's involved in all this um and they, 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 they so back to present day and they, you know they, they grab uh, uh charlotte and she wakes up sitting in this room uh with with this red dress on they've dressed her in like you know a fancy gown and she's got like you know a cello there and like the guys are there uh even 
even Lizzie's there. Lizzie seems to be siding with them and it seems to be on board with this punishment uh, as if she's like been indoctrinated. And I thought, oh, maybe the movie's trying to say something here about how she's been so mind-washed with this is how it's supposed to be that she's, she's actually sticking up for him. And he does this really dark thing because he's like, I'm not going to play for you. I'm not going to play for you. And he's he's like, hey, if you, if you fail, it won't be you that gets the punishment. And then he brings in the girl from Shanghai who's like, you know, 13 and sits yeah. her in the middle of the, the, the chair in the room and he's like, oh, a private problem. And he's got his hands on her shoulders and it's like super like dark and creepy the whole time. Mm-hmm. And so it, it places this pressure on Charlotte to to play um, play perfectly, otherwise this this child is going to be abused, and that that is like the, the stakes of the scene. And it, like this is a movie, like this movie's crazy. Like this this like this this is not where I thought this was going in the first like twenty <laughs> minutes. Yeah. Not not even close. <laughs> and like so so it's a really high tense scene. And I, I think I, I guess I'll commend it to a point of like I think Charlotte like after the the reveal that she caused the hand cut off thing, um, mm-hmm. and that she planned that she felt she felt pretty evil at that point. She felt very maniacal, and this was like a really like well thought out like dark plan to make someone cut their hand off. It felt very yeah. sinister. And to the to the movie's credit, at this point, I'm like I'm in her side now. Like I am rooting for her to somehow yeah. like you know save the day here and get out of this. Um, mm-hmm. And she plays, she does actually mess up a note uh, in, in the, her mm-hmm. performance. And they actually let the little girl go. And he's like, I w- you really thought I was going to p- do, you know, do that to her? Like, mm-hmm. she's not played played enough and practiced enough to be in here. She's not got the tattoo yet, because they all have little music note tattoos yeah. uh, before mm-hmm. before they get to play in here. Uh, which, by the way, giving, like, 13-year-olds tattoos to, like, show them they've, they've passed oh, yeah. something is already, <laughs> you know, disturbing. Yeah. Um, not as disturbing as a sexual assault, obviously, but disturbing in its own way. Um so yeah, um, and he basically says, okay, you two can get started with her. Um, call me when she stops biting, which is a really dark line. Jeez. Uh, it's just like, you know, when she stops struggling, call me because I can't be bothered dealing with that. And yeah. it, it gets really dark here where they're going towards her. They're, they're going up with t- towards her and Lizzie's like, no, let me have first go. Um, and she actually mm-hmm. takes her her stump, you know her 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 you know where her hand was, which actually mm-hmm. I want to credit before I get to the, the dark stuff here. I want to credit uh, how good this effect is because it really looks like oh, she's yeah. missing a hand. Like you know, because we've seen we've all seen movies where someone's supposed to be missing a mm-hmm. hand, but like the length of the arm where the stump is just is a little bit long. It's always yeah. yeah. Uh, this j- always wearing like a long shirt and yeah. yeah. Whereas this is like no no her arm is exposed and like it's it's clearly a very good. CG effect to take away her hand, uh, so uh, props for that. And she's like, "No, I'm going to stub this this stump, you know, up there <laughs> to, to yeah. put it as, as kindly as I can." Uh, yeah. she, you know, she's dropping C bombs in the city, but I'm going to be polite because I'm a I'm a classy broad. Um, Putting it up there where God told me to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then, just as she's about to do it, the other two guys like start to collapse as if because because Lizzie mm. did serve them drinks, and it's like, oh wait a minute, Lizzie's like actually mm. not evil. Like Lizzie's actually on her side now, and it does the same thing as it did earlier on, where it rewinds and it goes all the way back to like when she like kidnapped her in the house. And it, it took me a split second because I, I thought that, oh, maybe it had been Charlotte that poisoned the drinks. Like she had fought mm. really far ahead and knew this might happen. So I still wasn't like completely sure, like, uh, you know, if her and Lizzie were working together yet or not. Yeah, but it goes all the way back to like them in the house when she first showed up. And, you know, like Lizzie wants to kill her, but she breaks down and cries and she's like mm-hmm. no you were right because we get like more of the scene where after she cut off her hand where she actually talks to her about you know the assault and what he's been doing and what he does to other girls and she's like no we should do something and you know charles will help me then uh so yeah. so we see that you know lizzie poisons a drink they're working together and you know we have this this ending here where they come out and like attack anton and they're both ready and we see actually charlotte for the first time in the movie takes off her wig because she's got really short hair because of her hair being mm-hmm. shaved in the, the the mental hospital and they yeah they, they basically go to kill him uh, but it's actually more of a struggle it's more of a fight i actually thought this was a really brutal uh fight scene i don't know about you oh yeah 
yeah no this was like you know it was like hard to watch at parts when the, the uh you know like butcher knife or whatever like goes through uh, you know charlotte's like hand like that is like really really yeah. like it, gross. It, it goes through her hand and then he like yeah. slides up her, her forearm yeah. and Ugh. like it actually you can see you can almost see the hole is like, right through the arm like, making a big okay. giant slit is it the same uh hand that she tried to slit her wrist on maybe that would, that would be you know like a dramatic yeah beat if it was yeah so it makes sense that it was but it's a really really bloody moment where i was like oh and, and you know we're fans of gore we, we watch a lot of gory yeah. things but <laughs> that's made me go like oh <laughs> like that, that yeah. looked painful like, like, yeah like sometimes like when there's certain parts of the body uh or like certain ways of doing stuff the way like yeah even if you like like crazy over the top gore and stuff there's still stuff that can kind of make you wince and this was definitely one of those times where i was like wow <laughs> slice in the back of the ankle oh yeah de- definitely mm-hmm. not a not a fan of that not a big uh, uh usually not uh super big on like eye trauma uh yeah yeah that's fair <laughs> that, that that's that's one of that's fair uh sometimes makes me look away but yeah so yeah so they win the fight though they stab him a bunch of times he's got like two knives and a cleaver sticking out of him at the end of this uh, he's not quite dead <laughs> though because the final scene of the movie is that we see that they've actually put him in the chair uh, in the, the perfection mm-hmm. room but he's missing his arms and legs and his eyes are sewn shut and so is his mouth so he's, he can hear he can do nothing but hear and mm-hmm. it's this over the top ridiculous visual of him being there just this you know nothing you know he's just you know, he's, he's just the He's, he's a limbless, like, corpse, basically, who's barely alive. Yeah. And the, the two girls play the cello together, where Lizzie does the, does the <laughs> not to quote Alien Covenant, but she does the fingering on the, on the neck. <laughs> and uh, Charlotte does the bowing. And the yeah. movie ends there. You know, they, they play this song, and, you know, this, they're all dressed up, and they're, they're playing in unison together, and it's... They, they, they found strength with each... I, I, I actually kind of like the final moment, because it's like... Mm. They found strength in each other. Like they, they found allies in each other. Uh, as ridiculous as the story is, as ridiculous and over the top as like the plan to like get make her cut off her own hand, is. Um, yeah, it's a really like batshit crazy visual, but it looks so cool. Like seeing them playing together as like yeah this weird like you know like oh uh yeah that side of you can play this side and like this side you can play that side because mm-hmm. yeah like obviously they're each missing uh, a hand now but it, it makes like such like a creepy cool looking like final shot yeah uh but i, I like the symbols symbolism of it of like finding strength in each other and yeah um so that's that's really good the, i mean as, as far as like analyzing the overall themes of the movie it feels like a really <laughs> a really daunting <laughs> task but uh, the, idea, the idea of the of the teacher like striving for greatness but going so far to because because at one point he says you know, I, you know i'm not going to assault the 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 13 year old girl from shanghai like like i'm not just some random pervert like no i do it to make yeah. you better because it makes you a better you know you strive for perfection because of how you're yeah. punished um uh, this idea that he uses uh, like his his power, his position, uh, yes. and sort of demeans their sexuality by what he does, uh, mm-hmm. it, 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 you know. So the idea that they find strength in each other and kind of you know it, it is a very uh, I don't want to call it a feminist film per se. I mean, although debatably it is, uh, but the idea sure. that they 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 solve it themselves together. They they don't like get help from anywhere else. Um, yeah, you know so. Uh, yeah, I mean, and it's hard not to feel that way. I mean, they have scenes where there's like three guys in tuxedos watching like a young girl on stage, and oh, yeah. they're, they're going to do what they're going to do to her afterwards. It's just mm-hmm. it really gives you this this chill down your your spine. Um, yeah, it, it it definitely does feel good. <laughs> yeah, when they do finally like get revenge and stuff, because yeah, yeah th- these people are so, um, <laughs> you know, such awful people. Oh, that, the penis, yeah, uh, yeah, and then and yeah, and, and you know, <laughs> I, I haven't um you know, thought about it too much because there is, I mean, just plot wise alone, there's so much to unpack it, and, you know, in it, but yeah, I'm sure there's like a lot of allegories you can make to, you know, a lot of stuff that's going on right now. And then, you know, the ideas of, yeah, like, you know, uh, just these, you know, powerful men who kind of just lord themselves, you know, over women and think, you know, that, and, you know, basically just use them as like, you know, they're not really people to him. They're this thing that he, 
is using to get what he wants, which is just like you know this per- this perfect uh, you know piece of art. Yeah, he's, um, he's following his own career and his own reputation by creating these these cellists who are, you know, best yeah. in the world, you know, world class kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so it, like, there's even like a, a line at some point where he says like, oh, like you know, it's like you know uh when they mess up it's like hey like you're like you're messing me up like you know like uh, he's saying like oh like you when you do this like you're hurting me you're hurting the school it's it's not like oh you made a mistake like go on it's like no like how dare you you know mess this up for me oh yeah it's like he 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 he's awful. He's awful anyway. Before we even get to the sexual assault stuff, but like yeah, <laughs> yeah, the, the the way he waxes on lyrically about about things is is yeah, and he he thinks it's just. He thinks that this this pushing is is the way to go. Um, yeah, and it almost makes me think of um, uh, the, obviously not the sexual assault part specifically. Although um, there's definitely stories of this <laughs> happening. It makes yeah. me think of like uh, high school like football coaches who like push the, the oh, players sure. too hard. Yeah. I was getting like some of those vibes, but this, this was like the the more like eccentric version of that because because yeah. you know it's playing the cello. You know, it's just it's a little bit different. But the the idea, the core idea is kind of the same thing. Um, yeah. yeah. So yeah no there's, there's a lot to unpack at it uh it's only 90 minutes long but mike is a pack 90 minutes like it is, <laughs> it is constantly doing things and like i say like the, the, at one point on the bus where i'm thinking no, this is a great movie about her getting sick and hit, like them dealing with that mm. like that's, that's what i thought the movie was going to be and then it's like no 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 no. this is about a re- this is a revenge horror movie about going after mm. uh this this uh well let's go call him a pedophile that's what he is essentially yeah um <laughs> Yeah, I, I am like you know very curious how this would uh, you know fare on a, a second viewing. Like once you kind of know mm. what to expect, because you know like at the start of the review when I was kind of saying I'm not sure how I feel about it. Like I think it is part of it is because yeah, there's so much surprises and uh, you know there is um, uh, like yeah expectations yeah I had beforehand of yeah like oh like how crazy and stuff is it gonna be and um yeah i wonder how it would you know go now just watching it and the, just as is the hope the hope on a second viewing is that knowing where it goes would mean that the subtext and a lot of the earlier stuff that maybe you didn't pick sure, up on the yeah. first time um like you know how they are so attracted to each other like you know the, 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 what they see in each other the what they connect over that, that those kind of things maybe that speaks to what, what their experiences are um yeah you know uh th- yeah i like i i think it may hold up really well on a second viewing but i can't say that until yeah. i've actually uh, seen it a second time so <laughs> but uh no i'm, I'm pretty yeah. positive on it i, th- I think it, it yeah. definitely feels like some stuff feels extreme to the point of be like you know the, the entire plan to make a cut off her own hand does feel very mm-hmm. kind of over the top and movie like but mm-hmm. it's handled so well and how it's revealed and it's it's like i feel like the movie has like just, basically just in its editing and direction it has kind of this mm-hmm. almost upbeat style where it is i almost sure. feel that the movie's kind of grinning at me and winking at me going yeah we're being wet <laughs> here even though there's not necessarily a lot of jokes or whatever in the actual movie itself but it does yeah. it, it gives this nice contrast to the absurd and at times very dark events that take place in the film and it does kind of let some of that go like when, when it gets into that room where, where charlotte's like you know chained to that chair and she's supposed to play the, the cello it stops doing a lot of the wittier editing it just plays it very straight and it's not until the moment where it, it's revealed that lizzie's actually working with her where it's like okay back to the, the fun witty like editing and the the you know yeah it's like almost like through the style of direction and editing it's it's telling you when to not when to have hope but when to have at least a sense of relief and when to sort of feel the energy and be excited about what's happening because yeah. obviously you're not excited before that point but once you realize right. Lizzie's working with her it's like oh now this might yeah. become a proper like femme fatale kind of like they're going to go yeah. after the bad guy kind of thing and you're kind of like all right i'm kind of into this now um mm. Yeah, I mean, admittedly, recommending this to horror fans is maybe a little bit weird. It's not like a full-on horror movie per se. I, I would still class it as a horror movie, I think. Sure, yeah. Um, I, I mean, you could basically call it a rape revenge movie if you really want to boil it down to the, the core yeah. detail. But Yeah, I think there's enough elements that, yeah, maybe if you wouldn't necessarily 
hundred percent call it a, a horror movie. It you know has a it shares a lot of the stuff that you would you know seek out a horror movie for. You know, there's like a lot of tension. You know, there's uh, you know mystery, gore, and everything. Yeah. So but there's, there's, there's like yeah. body horror that turns out to not be real, but yeah. it doesn't change the fact that all the yeah. scenes when they're playing still feel very disgusting and like Ugh. <laughs> you know there's definitely that feeling. And then yeah, and it gives us a villain that we can't wait to see die and. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, uh, yeah. I, I guess we're ready to rate the movie, Tim. If you're uh, sure, if you, think, if you if you think you've narrowed it down in your mind, then you feel like, I, I feel this way about it now. Um, well, I, I think I'm, I'm going to give it just uh, an eight. Uh, okay. Because I, I think it is really good. Uh, you, know, you know, like we said, like, you know, the performances are really good. It's a really interesting story that, you know, you're, you're never bored by. Uh, there's some cool, like, stylish, um, you know, flares uh, to it. Um, so, yeah, I think that's where uh, I'm going to land for now. Who knows? It might go maybe a little bit up or maybe a little bit down on, on a second viewing. But um, for now, yeah, it's really interesting. Definitely, you know, it definitely lives up to the reputation of, like, yeah, being very surprising and, and shocking. Mm. Yeah, uh, I'm actually also going to give it an 8. I actually thought you might go lower than that. Um, uh, much like you just said, though, I think it may go up on a second viewing uh, if, I, if I see it kind of work uh, the way it does on a second viewing. But um, certainly, I, th- I think it's a really good, well-directed movie uh, with a crazy script, great cast, uh, who all put in really good performances. And yeah, uh, I'm still going to forget forget it anytime soon. Like, you know, the, like some of the movies we watch, like I, I I mean, I couldn't tell you what happened in... I don't know. What was it earlier this year? <laughs> like, hell, the, the Prodigy wasn't even that long ago. I feel like I've forgotten most of that movie. I'm not forgetting The Perfection oh, yeah. for a while. Like, that, that's going to stick in my head, all this crazy shit. So, yeah. Uh, and that's worth something. It's worth something. Sure. Uh, so, <laughs> no, no, I, no I, I, I recommend it, especially if you like uh, something a little, a little bit crazier. Um,. So yeah, that is, uh, that's perfection. Uh, so by all means, let us know what you thought of the movie in the, the comments and all that jazz. Uh, like and subscribe, that helps us out a lot. As does, of course, rating the show on your iTunes app or whatever. Uh, if you give it five stars and give a little review, it helps people find the show and it spreads the show out to more people who might enjoy it. Uh, so no, that, is, that, is, that is good. Any final, final words that you want to say to the people, Tim? Uh, <laughs> I don't know, just... I guess be respectful of others. I don't know. <laughs> I, ex- I expected nothing, and yet I'm still disappointed. <laughs> that has been us. That has been Screams After Midnight. Thank you once again for watching and listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching the scary movies, guys, and we will see you next time.